If you were trapped on a remote island and forced to play children's games that would most likely kill you, would you survive? I will break down the mistakes made and the best way to beat every death game in the Squid Game. Imagine one day someone hands you a card with three strange shapes on it. You dial a number and you're told that you can have a shot at winning more money than you could have ever imagined possessing in your whole life. But the catch is that it comes at the cost of many lives, maybe even yours. For those who don't know, Netflix's Squid Game is a Korean TV show that makes every other game show look like child's play. The show's fictional world shows us the lives of debt-ridden, desperate South Koreans who are lured into a deserted island to play a bunch of kids' games for prize money of $40 million. Win, and you move on to the next level. Lose, and you are executed on the spot. So the question is, if you want to play the Squid Game, would you survive? The key to survival in a game like this might seem impossible to find, but it really isn't all that hard. Since all the challenges in the Squid Game are children's games, you're not going to be doing a lot of complex activities. All you need to do is to think smart and act fast. All of this while you try to keep yourself calm and collected, while people are dropping dead all around you. So, the first tip that you need to keep in mind as a Squid Game contestant is to not panic. No matter what happens around you, you shouldn't panic because that's what stops you from thinking smart and acting fast. Many contestants lose their concentration and start freaking out when they hear gunshots and see people dying right in front of them. This happened in the first game in the show called Red Light, Green Light. Contestants who were able to maintain their composure during the game survived. Those who fixated on all the eliminated players couldn't help but let that affect their position in the game. Another survival tactic in the game is to try and side with one of the guards. If you've watched the game, you would know that the circle guards are the lowest in terms of ranking. So trying to establish camaraderie with them might help you move ahead in the game. In the show, when the surgeon player joined forces with the workers to sell illegal organs to China, and in turn, for his services, the worker informed him of the games beforehand to know how to beat them. Now, you might not be a surgeon, so maybe you can promise the workers half of your winnings in exchange for all kinds of intel about the upcoming games. Another essential thing you need to focus on is building alliances. Now, if you're anything like the show's main character, Seong Gi Hun, you will take the first chance to try and form a team that you can stick with. But, sadly, this team building didn't really work out well for him, mainly because they let their feelings get in the way and began caring for each other. All of them except Sang Woo, of course. But you're going to need to watch the show to find out what we really mean. So, a smart thing to do would be to start building trust with other players. But make sure that you don't lose track of the fact that it's you versus them when it comes down to it. But of course, that doesn't mean you can't help each other for as long as you can. Let's say a riot breaks out in the middle of the night. If you have a strong team where everyone trusts each other, you'll be able to help each other out and keep each other safe compared to players who play the game alone. Now, coming on to the games, the first game of the competition is Red Light, Green Light. This is a relatively simple game because all you really have to do is stay still for as long as you need to win the game. But of course, in the Squid Game, Red Light, Green Light had the most number of deaths simply because people weren't expecting what was coming. The fact that anyone moved an inch when it wasn't time to move would be shot to death then and there. This created a lot of panic amongst the players, most of whom started to run toward the exit. And with every step they took, they broke the rules of the game and were shot. This takes us back to the tactic where you don't let anything phase you and try not to panic at all. All you need to do is to time your pace correctly and then find yourself in a comfortable and straightforward position to stand in while the robot is turned around to look at you. Remember, being slow and steady definitely wins this race. For Honeycomb, the second game of the competition, the easiest way would be to cheat like two of the show's characters. But that's if you're able to sneak in a lighter to melt off the candy. But since not all of us can do that, you'll have to rely on Gi Han's technique of trying to lick and melt the thinner part of the candy off to help your shape chip out of the mold. For tug of war, do anything, but just don't make the mistake of moving forward like Gi Han's team did when Sang Woo asked them to. The whole thing might have worked out on screen, but in real life, it's just too big of a risk to take, especially when it's your life on the line, or well, hanging on a rope on top of two very high towers. The smartest thing to do in a tug of war situation would be to take your rope and turn 180 degrees so your opponents face your back. This way, you'll be pulling the rope ahead in a different direction. 
further away from the gap between the two towers. Not only will this be safer, but through teamwork and coordination, this technique is guaranteed to win you the game in record time. For the marble game, the easiest way would be to use mental manipulation to try and turn the game in your favor, because otherwise, all kinds of marble games depend purely on luck. So, if you want to take a chance in your hands, make sure to try and use all the tricks in the book to make your opponent trust you enough for you to be able to get a hold of all their marbles somehow. The easiest way to do this would be to tell them to switch bags to count each other's marble and make sure that it's a fair game. But when they hand over their bag, refuse to give them yours. And then all you need to do to win the game is to go to one of the workers and show them that you've managed to procure all the marbles. It might weigh a little heavy on your conscience after you see your opponent being killed, but hey, it's better than dying yourself, right? In Glassbridge, you have 18 pairs of glass panels to walk across, and half of them are deadly, which means that you step on them and you're gone. According to statistics, people believe that after the first nine people have gone through, the rest of the path will most likely be straightforward, which is why your position in the lineup really matters a lot here. It's a fictional game created for the show in itself. So, unless the producers decide to release all of the rules and regulations of the glass bridge, there's really no other technique to it. The final game is the squid game, played between two players, each with a steak knife in their hand. This means it will ultimately be an epic knife battle where the winner takes all and the loser loses all, including their own life. Squid Game is a popular children's game in Korea, where children are divided into two groups, attack and defense. Once the game begins, the defense can run with two feet in bounds, while the attack outside the lines can only jump with one foot. But if an attacker cuts through the squid's waist passing to the defense, he is given the freedom to use both feet. Now, while it's true that physical strength is definitely a plus in this final showdown, one of the most important things you need to do is observe your opponent carefully. Since you and your opponent will be wearing tuxedos for this challenge, just use your pocket to hide your unarmed hand, making it harder to stab. Traditionally, to win the game, the attackers must kick the small closed space on the squid's head. But if someone from the defense manages to push you out of the squid's limit, you're out of the game. However, in the competition, you're free to kill your opponent instead of trying to push them out. Make sure you track each opponent's moves to try and find whatever opening you can to attack them with your knife, avoiding any bony areas because it is a steak knife after all. And well, hope for the best, I guess. That's a wrap for how to survive the squid game. Which one of these techniques do you think will work the best? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. See you next time.